Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. We're sometimes tempted to think that, that Jesus got himself at odds with the law of the Old Testament. And to some extent, he does throw out Old Testament laws. We're going to look at that. But basically what he runs headlong into is the tradition that comes from the Old Testament laws. The Talmud was being collected at this point. The Talmud was the Hebrew text with commentary around it about what that Hebrew text really meant. The Pharisees and some rabbis had identified 613 laws in the Old Testament, for example, and they decided that to avoid going into exile, they would keep those laws. That's what God wanted, was them to keep those laws. Well, the laws seemed kind of unkeepable to them, so they began to define what those laws were. There's laws about don't work on the Sabbath. That's all the law said. So they began to define what was work and what wasn't work on the Sabbath. That would have been in the Talmudic section, that, the commentary section that went around the text. It's those traditions, those commentaries, that Jesus gets most crossways with in the New Testament. And you're going to see it in Mark chapter 7. I want to take this, this section kind of slowly because there's some powerful stuff here. Mark chapter 7, when the Pharisees gathered together to him, with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem. By the way, in Mark's Gospel, Jerusalem is always the place of opposition. The bad things come out of, out of Jerusalem. He says, For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. That's that Talmudic stuff. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many other traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders? It's not, the question is not, Why don't your disciples live according to the Old Testament? The question is, Why don't your disciples live according to the traditions drawn from the Hebrew Scriptures? But they eat with hands defiled. In other words, they don't ceremonially wash their hands before they eat. He said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. Boy, he's right in their face on this one, isn't it? As it is written, and then he quotes Isaiah 29, 13, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Key line. Teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. In other words, acting as if the opinions of men were the equivalent of the word of God. There might be a cautionary note for us today there too. We need to be very careful that we don't make the opinions of men the word of God. He said to them, you leave the commandment of God and hold fast the tradition of men. He said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. So not only are you focused on tradition, but you throw away the commandment that gave rise to the tradition in order to focus on the tradition. And then he gives them an example. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother. That's the law. That's the scripture. And he who speaks evil of father and mother, let him surely die. That's the scripture. But you say, now comes the tradition. If a man tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is korban, that is dedicated or given to God. So my mom and dad are in bad shape. They need my help. I have all this money. But I say to them, uh, sorry, Mom and Dad, I'd like to help, but I can't because I dedicated all that money to God. I called it korban. Never mind that I get to use it, but I can't help you with it. And Jesus says, when you do that, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition which you hand on and many such things you do. You take their tradition and use it to throw out the intent of the law. And he called the people to him again and he said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. And this next line is a powerful, powerful line. There is nothing outside a man 
which by going into him can defile him, but the things which come out of a man are what defile him. No first century Jew would have agreed with that line because they had a whole host of foods they believed that when they went into you, they defiled them. He explains it in verse 18. Do you not see that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and so passes on? And then a parenthetical line by Mark. Thus he declared all foods clean. And out go pages of Leviticus that outline what you can and cannot eat. So he's running headlong into the traditions, but he's also taking on some of those Old Testament laws and pitching them out. And he just pitched out all the dietary laws. His next line, he said, what comes out of a man is what defiles a man. And his point is, the sin is not what you bring into you. The sin is what comes from you. Powerful statement from Jesus about tradition, the law, and a radical thing he does in throwing out bunches of Old Testament law at that point in his ministry. Why? Because he's going to become the Savior of the world. He's going to replace all this stuff with himself. And he came to fulfill the law for you and me so that we might live with God forever.